Welcome to episode 589 of Salcedo Paranormal. I'm your host, James Salcedo, and tonight we're sharing more true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or accounts of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live streams on Discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Tr- Trouble Minds Radio, Trouble Minds Radio, if I can say, say the name right, uh, comes on. As always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, for having me on the network and putting all my shows up there. And um, so I think that takes care of all that. Uh, as always, if you want to help the show, you can... Do that in a few different ways. You can always share the show with others and rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. You can uh, find books I've written, including paranormal fiction and nonfiction, over on Amazon, with one coming uh, hopefully soon. And uh, also you can sign up for the Patreon page. would really appreciate that. Um, uh, for any of the paid membership levels there, the membership tiers there, to get one extra True Paranormal Stories from the Web episode every week and uh at least most weeks anyway um been doing good so, so far since i started that so um there'll be some exceptions but not too many hopefully um or you can just make one-time donations through paypal support is never expected but uh, especially these days always appreciated as there are expenses in making these uh these projects from the show to the series of books that i plan on making along with the show from equipment to research materials to uh, travel expenses in some cases. So um, that covers everything. Next week we will get back to more of the usual mix of types of shows. Um, As I've said before, just wanted to do this special run of this kind of show this week for something different. And um, thinking about adding a second book into the the schedule uh, as far as the book review shows. They um, still do two book review, book review shows per week, but just have um, be reviewing two different books. And um, just to get keep things different and moving along with that. And uh, so that um, if you're not into the one kind, maybe you'll be into, other, into the other and uh, you can go from there. And then cutting down to one of the um, haunted places in the U.S. episodes per week so that we can still have a couple of these uh these kinds of shows, these true stories, true paranormal stories on the web, or one of them per week along with a listener experiences show when that is uh, available, when that is possible. So, um, but with that said, I think we can get to the stories now, the accounts now of uh, experiences. So let me get to that document and we'll go from there. Uh, Let's see. Okay. Uh, Let me scroll a little bit. All right. This one says, uh, this happened a while ago when I was six or seven years old and my friend was nine or ten years old. I live in a fairly new house with no known bad history in the house or neighborhood. My friend and I were playing in the basement while home alone. My mom trusted me being home alone with my friend because he was old enough, which made me happy. While talking, we heard a soft uh, voice of a woman, woman or girl saying, Grandma. Immediately after hearing the voice, we sprinted upstairs to my room. Neither of us had a phone at the time. I am certain I didn't say it, 
and my friend claimed he didn't say it either. Recently, I talked to my friend and asked if he, if he remembered that day or if I was imagining things. My friend confirmed that he remembered, uh, remembered it and still maintains that he didn't say it. I guess it's possible that my friend could have been lying, but I also wonder if there is any other explanation for the incident. I have not experienced anything similar since then, at least not in my house. And that's where that one ends. I wonder, it sounds almost like possibly maybe some kind of a time overlap, um, especially if it was just that one time. Uh, and there's only that one event in that house. I could see it being that, or even just a, a sort of a residual energy of maybe a, a someone that was there a lot that was visiting their grandma that was would say that a lot in that location. I could see that too. Um, so I don't know. Just because it was the only thing that happened, I mean that's that's good. But also, I don't blame them, the writer there, and their friend for being uh, surprised. But, um, but yeah, so I think there, I think residual energy is really a, a thing and it can take, it can have so many appearances or, or, or sounds. And, uh, I think it could probably be going on at times when we may not even realize it. And maybe they just picked up on it on that one time. And, um, so I, I, I feel like I've had, and this is making, I don't know why this is like, triggering this memory, but I had a, a dream one time about um, looking into my kitchen in my apartment that I'm in now, and there was a woman that was going through my uh, the um, one of the drawers in the kitchen, and it was just like she was going about her business. I didn't see a lot of detail on her. Um, I was across the, like, basically at the other, like, in the living room area. And but it was just like she was going about the usual business, and it's it's the drawer that's right next to the sink. So I imagine it'd be a pretty common for that to be like the silverware drawer. So I wonder how much residual energy is just spent in the locations like that, where it's a common area to be doing things. And maybe I just picked up on it in dream state or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know why that is like popping into memory now, but. But yeah, so it could just be that the these two kids at the time heard um, this girl talking to their grandma, or calling for their grandma uh, in another time, or you know, whether it was uh, in in real um, sort of like a real time overlap where it was the person, or it was the residual sound of that person calling. It's hard to say, but uh, definitely there. So. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have for that one. So let's move on to the next one here. And uh, let me see here. So, yeah, I think residual energy is definitely a thing. And um, sometimes it's easier to pick up than other times and depends on the person and what state they're in and all those things. So uh, this one says, when I was about 11 years old, I went to the hospital for a checkup. While walking down a corridor, I saw a nurse pushing an. Uh, let me see. Yep, yeah, uh, pushing an um, an elder, elderly woman in a wheelchair, who looked familiar. The lady in the wheelchair smiled and waved at me, so I waved back, with a smile. My carer and the nurse, I'm not sure what a carer is exactly, and the nurse looked at me uh, oddly, and the carer asked who I was waving at. I said I was waving at the lady that in the wheelchair that had just passed us. But the carer said, what lady? As the nurse turned a corner, I could see the, that the wheelchair was empty, actually empty. A few days later, my carer informed me that 
my grandma had passed away. I hadn't seen her in years due to being in foster care. I was very close to my grandma, so the news hit me hard. When I next saw my mom, I mentioned the lady I had seen in the wheel in the hospital and described her appearance. My mom showed a picture of the grandma on the phone, and she matched exactly the lady I had seen in the hospital. I told my mom which hospital I had been in, or I had seen the lady in, and described her clothing, a nightgown with lace around the arms and a fluffy blanket. My mom revealed that the hospital was the same one where my grandma had passed away just a few hours before I saw her. And she was wearing the same nightgown and a fluffy white blanket. To this day, I believe that my grandma knew I was coming to the hospital and stayed around to say a final goodbye. That's where that one ends. Um, sounds like a lot going on there with with the the the, um, the writer's life in general, but uh, also sounds like what they think it happened. Possibly, um, it's just uh, it seems pretty straightforward there. And um, I mean, hospitals are just full of energy, and. Um, I've been I've been to them a few times over the years and to me it always feels like they are just full of people. And I I don't just mean people you can see. I just mean full of people just all around. I mean just packed. I always get that feeling from hospitals. Um every time I've ever been to one especially in the rooms they just they feel like they're packed with people and it's not a negative feeling it's more of a mix really um which makes sense because you have people of all kinds um whether they're on this level of reality or not and so there i think there would be a mix and um so yeah that's i um it doesn't surprise you that that was able to happen with all the energy going on there. Yeah, Matt Tallis says, I hate hospitals. It's, I, I, I never, I didn't feel, I didn't like, feel like I had to leave, but yeah, I didn't, I was always glad when I could get out of there as quickly as I could. Um, never wanted to just stay in there for long, a long time. I don't know how people do it unless they're just either, unreceptive or they have just learned how to close themselves off shield themselves really well um i don't know but it's definitely not something i could i, I would want to deal with uh, on on a regular basis not even counting all the all uh, the stresses of the jobs involved in working in those places um yeah so but uh, yeah, it just seems like a straightforward story of the writer there getting one, uh, getting a goodbye from their grandma. That that it sounds like they hadn't seen her in a long time. So I guess maybe that's maybe that's why they didn't they didn't recognize her right away. I don't know. Um, but yeah, really, um, it's just amazing how many accounts that are similar are out there of people getting one last goodbye from a relative either as or after they had passed, the, the relative had passed. So moving on to the next uh, count here. All right, let's see here. This one says, last year I took a job working for a major retailer's DSP, or delivery service uh, partner. Many of my uh, routes were in the backwoods on the border of New York and Pennsylvania. I hated being on these roads. 
past dark, which happened quite a lot. And the houses were always miles apart. On a particularly foggy night, while driving on these back roads, I noticed lights periodically showing up in the sky. Initially, I thought the lights were high-powered flashlights being pointed up into the sky. After a few more stops on my route, I noticed that the direction of the lights kept changing. Feeling weirded out, I tried to focus on the, the road. While driving, I passed what I could only describe as three semi-transparent old-time miners. It's M-I-N-E-R-S. The miners were wearing old, beat-up denim, uh, had scrubby beards, and carried pickaxes, and wore hard hats with lights. The miners were standing shoulder to shoulder on the side of the road. I was driving at around 45 miles per hour, and the encounter lasted maybe two seconds. I did not turn around to investigate further. I had no interest in finding out any more about what I had seen. The people who live out in the middle of nowhere are a lot braver than I am. They can have that area for themselves. And that's where that one ends. <laughs> Excuse me. So I wonder, I don't know. I wonder if um, old fashioned lights that were on helmets could, or hard hats could be bright enough to be seen going into the sky like that. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's, um, that's my main question with that is, was this, was this person seeing somehow these miners looking up into the sky with their, their lights pointed up at the sky? But I don't know. The further back you go, it seems like the less powerful the lights would be. Unless I'm just incorrect about that. Um, so I don't know. It could be that the lights are, are not even connected to the to the miners. Um, could just be other weirdness going on there, and it could even be um, people doing different things out there in the middle of nowhere for whatever reason, putting up their lights up up in the up in the air. But yeah, the ghost miners, yeah, that's scary. That's definitely different. I, I would, I um. I don't know. I of course I'd be the one like wanting to stop and like try to talk to them, but um, that's just me. But I'm just wondering. I'm more. It's funny. I'm more interested in what the what trying to figure out what those lights were than I am in in the miners in a way because that makes sense. They're either residual energy images of those miners or they're somehow those miners in spirit form that are there but the lights going up into the air i don't know i guess maybe i'm focusing on that too much but um but yeah it is odd either way that all that happened in the same night and the the writer doesn't say that they have weird experiences all the time so what was going on that night that didn't go on the other times they were in that area. Unless they did have other experiences and they're just sharing one. That's also possible. But anyway, I don't know. Moving on to, uh, I think we have time for one more here. Uh, this one says, This happened a couple of summers ago when I was home alone. I woke up one morning and walked down the stairs. In front of me was my living room table and two love seat chairs. In one of the seats, I saw a very tall man with no face, 
just a tall, dark figure with its arms resting on the armrests. I stood there confused and rubbed my eyes. When I looked again, the figure was gone. I wonder if what I saw was due to just waking up or if I actually saw something paranormal. I have been interested in paranormal things since childhood and love it. And that's where that one ends. Um, sounds like they may have seen some kind of shadow figure, uh, tall, basically one of the, the tall, um, tall man or whatever. Um, doesn't sound like, and I forgot here. Let me just check on this. I don't think that said that there was, they had a hat, but just a tall figure, excuse me, my stomach. I don't know why it's rumbling, but, um, so yeah, I don't know what they saw, but it's, it's, um, it makes me wonder, I mean, how often do entities just sort of want to stop off at places as they're traveling and how often do they get spotted without meaning to, and then they just, they just, uh, go away once they realize they've been spotted because they didn't even mean to be. And if the writer there was just coming out of sleep, yes, it's possible that maybe they, I guess that they, they sort of were just seeing things, but also you're coming out of your, you're transitioning states of consciousness in a way. So maybe you, it was easier for the writer at, the, at that moment to see this figure because they were, just waking up and so often it seems like that's the case with these things it's it's the they can either be um sort of uh what am i trying to say here the same thing can either lead towards a possibility of paranormal or of just our own minds um playing tricks on us or or seeing things wrong or whatever um, it's it's like with um, with EMF with electromagnetic uh, field or fluctuations. They can they are said to um, to help possibly entities um, do things to show give signs that they're there, but also that energy when it's too much can cause the feeling of entities being there when they're not, uh, among other things. So. That's it's hard to know uh, what's going on there, and um, the ghost of Lincoln. Yeah, I don't know. That's the thing. It's um, but yeah. So I, I wonder about that. Wow, people behind me are having a party. Um, anyway, so I wonder about that. Um, just with the with that state of consciousness, you hear about that people either falling asleep or waking up. They they do have encounters, or at least it seems like they do. Uh, and then, of course, if you think about dreams, I mean, people have encounters with entities in dreams. Even sometimes they'll have them have encounters with entities in dreams and then see them when they're awake, too. So all of that whole area of that um, shifting states of consciousness there, it seems to be very, um, very open or very useful. Uh, very easy at times for uh, there to be contact with people between people and other other people or entities. So that's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all next time on Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.